Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Beyond the Frame Live. Today, we are going to be talking with Andrew Medeiros. Andrew runs a 22-lane candle pin center in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. Welcome, Andrew. Thanks for having me back. Yeah, well, Andrew, we are going to talk about something that's so fun and so exciting. Um, you know, the pandemic, we're starting to open back up. People are getting back to coming into the center. The guidelines have been reduced. More people are being vaccinated now. So a lot of the really strict guidelines have been loosened up a little bit. And we're people are just wanting to get out and get go have fun. And we're starting to kind of get into this groove of the new normal. And businesses like yourself are trying to attract customers. All businesses are. Restaurants, entertainment facilities, retail. Everybody is looking to get those customers back into their center. And part of that is, is really challenging. You can do that in several different ways. You can, uh, obviously, you can bring in new customers in paid ways, and you can bring in customers in non-paid ways. So that's what we're going to talk about today, is building a buzz for your center. So um, let me ask you first, let's kind of set the stage for this. You have been open uh, since when? Uh, we reopened post-pandemic in the middle of June. Okay. And how is business right now? Uh, business now is, um, well, we live in the Northeast, first of all, so it's very, very weather dependent. So um, I will tell you that um, it was really rough throughout December, January, the first half of February, and then things started to get better um, the end of February, March, and April, and it's been slowly coming back ever since. Uh, it was It was scary. Now the weather's getting a little bit nicer, so it's sort of um, mitigating that a little bit, but it's noticeably better than it has been and then probably than it even should be for this time of year, which is a great sign for the future. That is a, that is a great sign for sure. Well, you know, Andrew, you had shared with me several weeks ago that you have been on a mission and you have really been building a buzz and creating a culture or a mindset there at your center. And that's really, um, really quite interesting. You did a big remodel or renovation back in 2018, 2019. Tell me a little bit about that. Yep. Um, so my family took over. Uh, this whole plan has been really the, the baby brainchild of my father and I. Uh, and my mom's gotten involved and my sister's a little bit here and there. But we um, took a center that's been here since 1956 and totally remodeled it after we took it over. Um, it just needed a little facelift. It had an excellent reputation. Um, we put in all new lanes, um, new scoring system, new POS system. We completely renovated the arcade. We expanded our little, little mini snack bar into a full restaurant. Um, so we basically redone the entire facility from top to bottom. And uh, that, that was quite a daunting task uh, at the time. And then, and the effect that it had just, just people talking about, hey, did you hear what so-and-so, did you hear what Bowler is doing, did you hear what's going on over there, it was really incredible to hear at the time. Um, and we were, we were able to reap the rewards for a little while before COVID hit. Right. And, and you know, when, when a center does renovation or when they bring in something new, uh, that's definitely something that people talk about. And it's, you know, it's, it's normal to see that bump. Um, and yep. so when, when you did your renovation, uh, you went to social media, you brought the customer along as part of that journey. Am I right? Yeah. You have to show them what you're doing. I mean, you know, cause they're not necessarily coming through the door and watching every step of the process, but the more you put out there about what you're doing and how you're doing it um, and what you're trying to achieve, the more people get to uh, start talking about it and, and share that word with their friends um, with other people, both on social media and word of mouth, the more that that word gets out there, the quicker it spreads. And so we um, made a concerted effort to to do that, to use Facebook and Instagram and our website um, emails, you know, just to let people know how it was coming along. And it was really cool um, to hear people talking about it that, you know, you know, you didn't tell them directly, but, oh, I heard from someone who heard from someone that 
the place is all brand new over there. Is that true? It was really cool to, to see that happen. Yes. And, and you know, the, the, the key in that is when you bring in something new or you do something for your center, you are doing that for your customer. And Absolutely. if they don't realize what you're doing, if they have no idea that you bought a new lane machine, for example, for them, they aren't going to really appreciate that you see the need to continually evolve your center and do things to make their experience better. So, you know, I think that uh, anything that you do in a bowling center or entertainment center that you are doing for the customer, you need to share that. You need to tell them that story. And I know I mentioned lane machine. That's something that sometimes it does get overlooked when you buy a new lane machine. Sure. Me, I created uh, birth announcements and we gave out birth announcements and, and candy cigars because oh, that cool. was our new baby. You know, yeah. I, uh, I teased about it and said, <laughs> treat it like a baby. Uh, it's a yep. very valuable part of our, our thing. And of course, you know, I wanted to have some fun with it. So when you do something like that, it's very easy to create that buzz. And then that then is organically grown. That message gets out by people sharing it because they're excited. Yeah, absolutely. And and when you do add anything or renovate, whether whether it's a major renovation or even even a small, um, you know, something that you're adding that's small or redoing that's small, um, the organic is is all well and good. Uh, there's sometimes that, you know, for us we had completely re-imaged the entire center. It, I mean, people walked in after and they it was a new place. They didn't even recognize it. Um, sometimes you have to move that along. And when you're investing that kind of money in a center. Uh, in a renovation project or whatever, it's for us, it was worthwhile to say, okay, we could let this kind of build slowly and let the word get out. Or we could just say, we're finally done with it. We're all in. We're going to drop some money on advertising um, and really get the word out all at once. So we hired uh, the local radio station, um, the morning show, which is the biggest uh, morning show with the most following anywhere in New England. We brought them in for a grand reopening. They hosted the event live. Um, we dropped on all out of pocket, I think it was like a little over $5,000 on advertising, which to me was scary because I yeah. where, where we took over, uh, they didn't, the previous owners, you know, they didn't do a lot of advertising. But we said, you know what? Let's just, let's try it. Let's see what happens. And you know, they promoted it on the radio. We did social media. We, we spent a whole bunch of money just advertising the fact that, hey, we've completely renovated and this whole place is brand new. And I was shocked. The first, we did it on a Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. I didn't even see that the radio station people came in on Saturday because I didn't stop running around. It was packed the entire day. We made all of our money back on that Saturday alone that we had spent on advertising. And everything that happened after that with the word spreading from there was all just gravy. Absolutely. Yes. And, and you know, um, there's a lot of different ways to, to advertise. Obviously, yeah. to do a spin. Now, in that case also, I mean, just taking it a step further, since we are looking for ways to save money and, and kind of recover from, from a, a very difficult um, past year, you know, you can also approach some of those those uh, radio stations or TV stations, wherever you're wanting to place your ad on maybe possibly trading out part of it. Yep. Um, and sometimes what you see on that is that they come out, you know, if you want to do a partial trade out, they have such a great time that you get even more publicity yeah. because the DJ yep. talks about it on the air or, you know, whatever. <laughs> that's, exactly what, that's exactly what happened here. After we hosted the event, they said, um, we're holding our Christmas party here. Wow. In December. So hold this date. <laughs> and they gave us, I gave them, I gave them the quote that I would have given anybody else. And uh -huh. they did a two hour event. Um, and uh, they gave us full credit dollar for dollar of the, of the retail value, not the, not the cost to us, but the cost that we would charge anybody else dollar for dollar for future advertising that we used. Um, and the next day on the radio, they couldn't stop talking about it. Oh, that's uh, hey, they, they had a made a little, run. yeah, they had made a that's little a joke while run. they were here and the radio stations, two buildings down. So they were talking about, I think it was something about one of the guy's shoes, shoes were smelly. 
um, <laughs> during the during the event. So we heard him talking about it. I grabbed a can of shoe spray and ran it down the radio station and oh, um, sent them an email and said, "Hey, I left something on your front door." <laughs> oh, how fun that is! And, and see, that's what we're talking about about building that buzz. <laughs> Now, you know, that was a combination yeah. of you spent money and then you took advantage of the situation by allowing that buzz to build and to yeah. sh be shared. Um, but there's a lot of ways that you can actually build a buzz without any money at all or very little money. And that's yeah. really the part that gets me excited when we start to talk about that, because these are things that are obtainable by everybody. This is something that anybody can do. It's just a matter of realizing how much some of these tiny little details can have such a huge impact on building that buzz and growing your business. So let's talk a little bit about some of the ways that you can kind of organically um, build a buzz um you know it's it's a lot about that mindset and that sure. culture uh that you're building you had um you had shared with me earlier that you're uh you are building a culture there at bolarama family fund center tell me a little bit about what you mean by that so there's a lot to it um and to be honest, I didn't even realize how much there was to it until we were always, already elbows deep. We were already doing it. Mm -hmm. um, this is something that my father and I always believed. Uh, and one of the reasons that we went into business. So it starts with um, the facility has to be clean. Yep. That's the biggest, you know, first impressions, um, impressions on things like restrooms. It's got to be clean. People need to walk in and say, wow, it's like it's really nice in here. Um, and it starts with that. And then from there, it's about empowering employees. And the most important thing I would say, I mean, I could keep going on and on, but important thing is just about how you make people feel. And that includes team members, people, um, everybody. You have to make, find ways. To, uh, and, and if you do it right, you can, you can do that with, you know, it costs nothing. It's just about an attitude um, and, you know, encouraging your team and lead, uh, leading by example, encouraging your team to, uh, to remember people, um, to treat them the way they want to be treated and to go above and beyond. And that's the biggest, for us, what we've seen is that's the biggest impact. It's just the way you treat people. You're, you're so right. And, and you said something very interesting, and I think it's a good point um, to reiterate. That has to start with the employees. So, you know, I, I shared with you early on, you have been very clear, you've painted a very clear picture of what the culture is that you are creating at your center. And you have brought the employees along with it. And the, the employees are bought into this culture. They're bought into totally. the mindset that totally, they yeah. want each and every customer that walks through your door to have that feeling. And, you know, as I shared earlier, I call that a warm fuzzy. <laughs> it's about how they're delivering the message, what message they're delivering and how they're delivering it. You know, you and I can deliver a message, the same exact language and our body language can be completely different. And it's going to be received by the person getting that message completely different. Um, and so I think, I think there's a lot of things that go into that. Uh, empathy is is something that, you know, when you can be empathetic with a customer and you are genuine in that, uh, it's not something that you're being forced, you know. Yep. Empathetic can be, empathy can be forced. Yep. But when it's genuine empathy and you are looking up and you're thanking a customer for their patience, I'll be right with you, um, they notice that. You didn't Absolutely. Have to do that. Yep, and it starts from. I, I was going to say it starts from the moment they walk in the door, but honestly, it, I I think it actually starts even earlier than that. It starts from that phone call. I I will not hang up the phone after speaking to a guest or a customer here without saying thank you for calling, and I think that they can hear that I mean it, 
And I've, I've actually noticed even in my own delivery, you know, when we were shut down, that was awful. And when we reopened and it was empty, it was still awful. Yeah. And so I think we've learned to not take the times that we had where we were busy for granted. And now when people call and they ask a, a question, even the simplest question of, hey, are you open? Yep, we're open. Come on down. Okay, great. And I say, thank you for calling. And I, and I mean it because I remember a year ago, I didn't have any customers to thank. And yes. I think that goes a long goes a long way. And the same thing when they come through the door, you know, you could, you could have them come through, they come to your front desk. Hi, how are you? What size shoes do you need? Yes. Okay. That's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, but there's a real big difference between that and Hey guys, how are you doing today? Great to see you. Thanks for coming in. And, and if you, if you're genuine with that, if you're actually excited that people are there, it comes through and they will remember that. Yes. Well, you know, the other thing that I that is really important in creating that buzz and attracting new customers into your building is bringing them along in the story and sharing um, what's going on in your center and, and that transparency. Um, and you have done a phenomenal job during the pandemic of keeping the customers in the story. You've brought them along. You've let them see what you're doing. Uh, you've been very genuine uh, about telling the story of what's going on at Bolarama Family Fun Center. And your social media presence has been spot on. And I'm sure that your customers have had feedback on that, um, at least by them coming in and, and yeah. sharing, hey, I saw this on social media. That was really cool. It's been surprising, and I will tell you, it took some time because in the beginning, when we first took over and started doing it, I was really discouraged for the first, even for the first six months, because it was like, you know, I'm putting out coupons and stuff, and I'm telling people what's going on, and it doesn't happen right away. I was discouraged because I was thinking, I'm working so hard to, to have this social media presence, and I feel like I'm not getting anything in return. And then slowly over a period of time, I'm hearing more and more people compliment us on the social media stuff. And I, I almost don't know how to take it because <laughs> I feel like I'm not doing enough, but I'm realizing that it's having an impact and it takes time to do that. Um, but if you're trying to build something, if you're trying to build a culture, you have to be patient um, and you have to be really diligent with it. Yes, you are so right. And, and you know, when it comes to social media, it's that that ripple effect that really starts to make the difference. You know, you share something and it brings somebody in and they come in and they have a great experience and they share that. You know, today's younger customer, the, the, the Gen Zers or the Alpha Gen, they, they make their decisions based on feedback from yep. peers, yep. much more so than advertising or even direct uh, messaging from the center itself. And so to create that experience that then helps you to be, to get the customers to want to share their experience with somebody else is, is where it really starts to build. You know, yep. one thing gets you to this level and then you take it to this level. Yep. And, um, so, you know, and that's the fun part is watching it grow and watching people come in from all different directions and even learning what brought them to your center. I think that's sure. really interesting to find out what brought you here today. Yeah. And there's a lot of things. I mean, there's so much that you can put on social media. Mm -hmm. It's not just every day of the week posting whatever special you're having that day. And I found that out. I found that out quickly. And I think that was at, in the beginning sort of where I was going wrong. Um, and I've made a ton of mistakes and I've learned a lot from it, but it's about the content. There's all kinds of content. And I'm actually, you know, I come through the door, even when I'm walking down the street and I see now I, I'm starting to see content everywhere. Yeah. And it's not just about, like I said, it's not about specials. It's not always about promoting yourself and your own business. It's about connecting with people mm -hmm. and what's, what are they going to see that's, Hey, that's cool. And I'm going to like hit that like button and I'm going to share it. Um, and it's like I said, it's it's links, it's videos, it's it's as much um, as much different stuff you can put up there. I think the better because you're going to reach a lot different people. And uh, and I, and I'm it's funny I mentioned that 
that we, we went wrong in a lot of ways at the beginning, um, especially coming out of the pandemic, it seemed like nothing we were doing was working. Um, and so we had a family meeting and we were sort of like, okay, I think I told you before we started this uh, little interview that we, you know, we said, we sat down at my parents' house. We said our business is getting walloped and what are we, you know, we're, our hearts are in it. We're invested. Um, and we said, well, let's, let's put some more effort into the social media. When we see something that gets posted, we're going to share it. And we're going to maybe ask our friends to share it. And you started to talk about how it spreads on social media. And that's honestly, like, that's how the algorithm works. The yeah. more people that see something, the more people that Facebook shows that same something. Um, and, it, and it's without any advertising. So you got to find out of the box ways to spread that message, even if you have to sort of cheat a little bit to get there. <laughs> of course, of course. Well, you know, and it's, it's that um, it's, you know, growing organically and finding ways that you can still continue to push forward without having to spend a lot of money. You know, certainly we want to have a mix of things. You still want to do your paid advertising and sure. uh, things along those way, uh, along those lines. But to be able to do these things that are just naturally going to continue to help your business prosper uh, it's it's a home run, and it really is something that once you create that culture and it starts to grow, it just starts to really blossom, um, as we said, from, you know, friends of friends sharing content and so on and so forth. Um, I, I saw a, a quote, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it here because as I was preparing for today's show, I thought, you know, building a buzz organically, uh, th this really does apply, and it, it goes like this. Genuine prosperity is not something that money can buy. Instead, it is achieved by having a clear view of what is important to you. And I nice. think that that pretty much sums up what you have done by creating this culture. Your customers are very important to you. You value them as customers. Absolutely. You have uh, through your mindset, and empowering your employees, you have sent that message loud and clear to your customers that they are more than money in your register. They are human beings that you value mm -hmm. and you appreciate that they have spent their money in your facility. Um, so I Absolutely. had to share that with you because if I that's had awesome. a quote, that would be my Andrew quote. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's a really nice. That's a really nice compliment. And you're you're right. It's all about, it's, they're not just a number. They're not just a name on a list. You have to make them feel special and it doesn't matter. And you, like I said before, it doesn't cost anything to do that. It's when, when you see somebody, it, it, it's as little as when you see somebody that you just saw in your center recently and they came back, mm -hmm. recognizing that they came back and you don't even have to remember their names. Of course, that goes a long way too, but and we when you see somebody- Absolutely. You got the scoring system. I actually, I actually train my, um, my staff, especially like on the restaurant side, if they're, if they're a uh, waiter or waitress serving on, on the uh, restaurant and they'll say, do you know so-and-so's name on lane, whatever. And I'll, I'll go up and I'll point it out on the screen and I'll say second bowler, Steve. And Smart. they, they don't realize that we have those tricks. Yes. Um, but when you do that, it goes a long way. But even if you don't remember their names or if they haven't checked in yet, as soon as they walk through the door, when I see somebody that's come in recently, hey, guys, welcome back. You, you, were, you, were, you, know, you were in here a few days ago. They're like, you remember me? That warm fuzzy. It's Absolutely. That warm fuzzy. It, makes, it makes a huge impression. And people, you can just see the smile, even if they're wearing masks, you can see their face just yeah. start glowing. And it, it makes a huge difference. And, you know, that is a unique selling point for your center, you know, uh, to be able to distinguish your center of giving out warm fuzzies, if you know what I mean, sure. um, to give the customer that special feeling. That is a unique selling point. And customers do come because of that very reason. So uh, definitely keeping that mentality, keeping that mindset is going to 
keep you on the road to returning to prosperity for sure. So let me ask you, what is the most valuable lesson that you learned during the pandemic? I think for us, the, the most valuable lesson was whatever you're doing, you, got, you have to keep doing it and you can't stop growing. Uh, I, I mentioned we went down a lot of different roads trying to get back to where we were and you have to be patient with it. And I realized that I, I don't have all the answers. There was a lot of stuff that we tried that were flat out total dud failures. Mm -hmm. One of our advertising campaigns was, you know, look how clean and fun and, you know, everything's clean and we're sanitizing everything. And at the beginning, we thought we were sort of ahead of the curve on that. And what it turned out that it, it really didn't matter. They, the people that were going out were going out. They already knew we were clean, so they were coming. If Otherwise, they weren't going out at all. So that was one of the things that I learned. Like, if you if you fail at something, okay, that didn't work. Time to try something else. Dust yourself off and get back on. Yeah, yep. I think, and I think that was the biggest lesson that we learned. Um, and we just keep talking about it, you know, talking to the staff. Hey, what are you guys hearing out there? Um, what if we try this? Okay, that didn't work. What if we tried this? That kind of worked, but maybe if we did it a little differently this time, it'll do better. And so just being willing and able to adapt, I think yeah. was one of the biggest lessons that we could take away from all of that. And and it was real interesting. I want to note something that you just said. You you mentioned that you went to the employees and asked them, what are you seeing out there? That again is so valuable in creating that culture that you have created um, because first of all, you can learn some very valuable things from your employees. Absolutely. And it gives them such a feeling of knowing that you had enough confidence in them to ask them for their input. That goes a long way too, so. Oh, absolutely. It's empowering the employees is a huge part of that culture because when you're making your employees happy, and this is something that I, I think that I knew all of them, but I didn't, it didn't really click. Even work, they're happy to be at work and they're happy to be doing what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Looks like we have a little bit of a slow connection here. Just be patient with us, folks. They're going to pass that feel on to the guest. I think I've got a slow connection. I'm sorry about it's the breakout. Okay. Should be coming back. It's sorry okay. about that. Yes. Well, you know, and that's really important right now to find ways to keep, if, if you're fortunate enough to be fully staffed, you want to keep those people uh, oh, yeah. happy and in place uh, because employees are hard to find right now. Uh, sure. And that is one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing industry-wide is, is, you know, getting back up to full staff. Right. And so when you can find opportunities to get buy-in from the employees, then that's going to certainly help you also uh, to be able to provide that great experience for your customers. Absolutely. Well, Andrew, I certainly do appreciate you sharing um, what you're doing at your center. Uh, I will continue to watch you and, and um, uh, see the progress that you're making, but you have really done a great job in telling the story and, and building that buzz organically. And I hope that our viewers uh, will, will be able to do the same thing. Um, you know, I, I had a thought and I wanna share it with you. Uh, when, when you hear a buzz around the beehive, you know that they're making honey inside. And when you hear buzz around a center, you know it's the place to be. So Absolutely. I would say you have a beehive going on right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind words. That's really nice of you to say. My pleasure. Well, viewers, I hope that you have gotten several pointers from Andrew and his experience of uh, building a buzz at his center. Next week, my colleague Jay Nephew will be back and he will have Dan Patterson uh, as his guest and they are going to do another uh, Tweak It or Antique It show. 
It's going to be next Tuesday <laughs> at 3 p.m. You won't want to miss it. It will definitely be something that uh, you're going to have a number of takeaways from. So make sure that you put that on your calendar now and also uh, make plans to attend Bowl Expo. If you are going to Bowl Expo, uh, be watching here on Beyond the Frame in the future. We will be there. We will be uh, reaching out and, and having interviews live on the floor. Uh, so uh, if nothing else, you can come by the booth and, and say hi to us, uh, but definitely make plans um, to, to, to get acquainted with Beyond the Frame live, really live at Bowl Expo, uh, which is just around the corner. <laughs> So uh, again, Andrew, thank you very much. Viewers, thank you for tuning in. I hope that great things are happening at your center and continue thinking beyond the frame. Have a great day, everybody. Best of luck.